good afternoon everyone today let's discuss a topic called uh, oscillations the word oscillation might be familiar to you as we have studied it in 7th standard before coming to the topic oscillations we need to know about uh, different kind of motion one is a periodic motion if a motion that repeats over and over at regular intervals of time if a motion happens after if it happens repeatedly after a fixed interval of time that is called a periodic motion i can give you some of the examples like a motion of any planet around the sun that is periodic for example earth you take it repeats its motion after every 365 days similarly motion of moon around earth that's an example of periodic motion even a comet like halley's comet that's its motion around the sun that's also a periodic motion the simplest daily examples like uh, a clock an analog clock its hands maybe seconds and hour hand or minute hand that all are in periodic motion now another one type of motion that is oscillatory it can also known as a harmonic motion it's a particular periodic motion definitely it's a periodic motion and this periodic motion is a to and fro motion that means forward and backward motion about a particular fixed point and that fixed point we call as a mean position for example a swing is an example of oscillatory motion a wall clock inside a wall clock you might have seen a pendulum that old and type pendulum clock there you have a pendulum which undergoes a an oscillatory motion you have a spring and if you have a spring suspended by a mass that mass will execute an oscillatory motion when it is disturbed even a bar magnet a freely suspended bar magnet like you take a bar magnet and tie it with a small thread at the middle hang it somewhere disturb it it will go a to and fro motion finally it will settle to the north to south direction but in between it will go some to and fro motion these are examples for oscillatory motion so suppose you take a simple pendulum like a pendulum you know you are familiar you have done the experiment also with the pendulum this is a pendulum this is called its mean position this point is called mean position where it is resting take it to one side here release it it goes to this side reaches here it comes back again reaches here after that it goes forward so about this mean position there is a to and a fro motion that's an oscillatory motion i told all the oscillatory motions are periodic because they repeat after a particular interval of time and that interval of time we call as time period so every oscillatory motion is a periodic motion but that doesn't mean every periodic motion is oscillatory we have certain mathematical representation of periodic motion that is through periodic functions we can use some mathematical functions like f of theta which can represent a periodic motion for example f of theta plus t if i write that will show that should give f of theta then it is a periodic motion f of theta plus t is equal to f of theta itself that is t's time period how to understand this is i can give you a simple example for example uh, i can write suppose 
you think like every mondays or every days like monday tuesday wednesday every day we have a physics period on uh, first period like first period is physics so let's write a physics as a function of time physics class that is first period plus every day which means after every 24 hours you get the same physics on the first period just an example i said so here 24 hour is the time period over which this class happens repeatedly even mathematical functions like sin theta cos theta are best examples of this periodic function for example sin of theta plus 2 pi gives sin theta itself because sin value repeats after every 360 degrees cos theta value also repeats after 360 degree or 2 pi how we can check the periodicity for example a function is given as sin of 2 pi small t by capital D to check this is periodic or not what you need to do is just replace this t with the t plus capital T like after a particular time period instead of t you make it as t plus capital T then this function f of t plus capital T is sin 2 pi this t is becoming t plus capital T just take this inside this t small t by capital T that is sin 2 pi small t by capital T plus 2 pi capital T by t t and t cancel capital T and capital T cancel sin 2 pi small t by capital T plus 2 pi comes we told if you take sine of any angle if you add 360 degree you get the same value of sine sine of 2 pi it's small t by capital T which means f of t plus capital T becomes f of t itself f1 or f of capital small t plus capital T gets f of t itself which means it is repeated after a capital T time and this repeated time is called a time period now we have a term called harmonic functions harmonic functions are repeated by sine or cos theta sine curve or cos curve sine graph or cos graph if a function can be represented as sine or cos that is known as harmonic function if you cannot represent it with the help of a sine or cos function we can call it as non harmonic functions still it can be periodic but harmonic means it's a particular periodic function that periodic function should be able to represent with the sine or cos if we cannot express it with sine or cos we call it as non harmonic in that itself again a particular case known as simple harmonic motion represented as shm simple harmonic motion if a motion will be called as a simple harmonic motion if some conditions it satisfies one condition it's it should be a to and fro motion that means it's a oscillatory motion it should be a to and fro motion about the mean position and uh, this to and fro motion will be under the action of a restoring force you know about restoring force we studied in mechanical properties of solids so the under the action of a restoring force there should be a to and fro motion and the restoring force should be directly proportional to displacement from the mean position and it should be directed towards the mean position i, I think you will not understand anything let me tell you so here I have a pendulum again coming, coming back to pendulum this is the mean position this is my mean position I have the pendulum up to here taken release it it goes here now let's examine this carefully you take this up to here you apply an external force you have to apply an external force then only it can be taken here you release it this goes back to its initial state 
but it doesn't stop here it goes in the opposite direction this is because of a restoring force which is opposite to the external applied force so restoring force is acting in the external opposite to the external direction this restoring force will be more if the displacement this is the displacement actually this is my displacement if the displacement is more restoring force is also more that is why it goes to more distance on the other side up to here it can go that's what we said a restoring force and the displacement are directly proportional and this restoring force will be directed towards the main position so here suppose if the body is ball is here restoring force will be acting towards the main position towards the right side when it comes here restoring force will be in this direction so it will be always directed towards the main position so if i mark x as the displacement and f as the restoring force this restoring force and displacement are in the uh, they are proportional they act in the opposite direction so displacement is always measured from the center from the mean position so from here if i mark x towards this side when the body reaches here but restoring force will be acting in the opposite direction that's why restoring force and displacement are proportional but given a negative sign wherever we have a proportionality we can make it into a constant equality a constant can be given that constant is called k and uh, that constant is called force constant in the case of a spring that force constant is called as a spring constant otherwise general name is a force constant this force constant let's give a, a definition for this force constant we are told f is equal to minus k by x or this force constant k is f by x if i give the uh, if i leave the negative sign because that negative sign shows only the direction so a k is equal to f by x i can give so it is a uh, it is defined as the restoring force f by displacement so force per unit displacement that is a uh, definition i can give for force constant that is a force per restoring force per unit displacement the unit will be newton per meter force is in newton displacement will be in meter newton per meter let's consider some more mathematical aspect of this that is uh, when the body moves this body will have a mass and uh, its mass is represented as m and uh, its acceleration there will be an acceleration that acceleration is given as a if so the force we have f is equal to minus kx and that force should be equal to ma as per newton's law this force f should be equal to ma and uh, that ma is equal to minus kx so here a will be equal to minus kx k by mx just bring this m here k by mx so here a is proportional to x negative sign we will leave a is equal to minus k by m x so k is constant m is mass that is also a constant so a is a constant times x which means a is proportional to x so simple harmonic motion can also be defined in a different way a particle can be in simple harmonic motion if it moves to and fro to and fro means forward and backward about a mean position under an acceleration and that acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement from the mean position and is always directed towards the mean position so this way also we can give a definition for simple harmonic motion either we can say the restoring force is directly proportional to the displacement and acts towards the center of the or the mean position or we can say the acceleration is directly proportional to the displacement and acts in the opposite direction or uh, acts towards the mean position both are correct some examples we can consider for simple harmonic motion that are uh, a loaded spring if you take a loaded spring and that loaded spring when it is disturbed it will undergo a simple harmonic motion if you take a tuning fork if you vibrate it then that undergoes a tuning for uh, this tuning fork undergoes a simple harmonic motion
even a valence bead of a watch that undergoes a simple harmonic motion. And this is uh, my tuning fork. Suppose I disturb this tuning fork, if I hit it with a hammer like this, just I hit it here, sound is formed. This is with the help of a simple harmonic motion. Here, this prongs of the tuning fork this side and this side when I am hitting here this will undergo a to and fro motion that means this will be moved towards the upward forward and backward direction slightly we cannot see it with our hand our eyes but we can feel the sound the sound formed you due to that Now let's consider some more uh, equation, some more mathematical part in this uh, simple harmonic motion. We told it can be represented as minus k, f is equal to minus kx, where k is the spring constant or force constant. We have a uh, return like f is equal to ma from Newton's second law. That acceleration can be represented in a different way. Like this, we can give uh, acceleration as a change in the velocity by time because acceleration is change in velocity by time. So, m is equal m into a become m into dv by dt. Also, we have a v is equal to dx by dt displacement by time. So this will give you f is equal to m d by dt of dx by dt m into d by dt of dx by dt which is equal to m into d into d d square x will come d t dt dt square so this is one way of representing this simple harmonic motion f is equal to md square x by dt square so here i can equate these two and these two are forces itself so if i equate this i get md square x by dt square is equal to minus kx or d square x by dt square i get it as minus k by mx so if i represent this k by m with a value omega square i can write it as d square x by dt square plus omega square x is equal to zero this is one way of representing the symbol harmonic motion this equation is known as the differential equation of symbol harmonic motion and this omega is nothing but the angular frequency this omega is 2 pi by t the angular frequency 2 pi by t or 2 pi nu frequency nu is frequency linear frequency omega is angular frequency so this k by m is seen that this k by m it's seen that which will be equal to omega square so this is one way of representing the simple harmonic motion that is differential equation of simple harmonic motion a few more terms related to that one is this harmonic oscillator in a particle or any object executing simple harmonic motion i can call it as a harmonic oscillator already we told uh, the term displacement the distance of the oscillating particle from its mean position so from the mean position how far it goes that is my displacement at a time I, how far it goes at a time is called a displacement there will be a maximum uh, displacement that is called amplitude uh, like uh, if I have a pendulum if I take it to one side up to here if I take release it it goes up to here maybe uh, next moment when it comes back it will be here at that time its displacement is x this is its displacement but this is the maximum distance it has gone that is my amplitude a and uh, there is a term called a time period 
suppose it starts from this side here it start it goes to one side it comes back to the same point what's the time taken for this the time taken for one complete oscillation that is my time period another one term is a frequency it's a number of oscillations completed in unit time you know this 1 by t is the frequency omega angular frequency that's another term another term we need to remember is about phase like uh, we told uh, uh, the displacement of a simple harmonic oscillator can be represented as using a sine function or a cos function i can write the displacement x as a that is a maximum displacement cos or sine omega t plus phi zero where this term omega t plus phi zero represents phase and here phi zero stands for the initial phase that means suppose when i start observing this oscillating pendulum when i check it it may not be exactly starting it may not be exactly at this end or this end maybe it will be in between when i start observing then i need some correction in this that is that initial angle it makes here this initial angle it makes here that is my initial phase we'll come to that points later in detail so for time being understand these are the terms or parameters related to simple harmonic motion 